this is Bonnie and today I am going to be working on um, using this stamp called Enchanted Library. It is from the newest collection from um, Fairy Hugs um, that came out that will be coming out um, in February. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and get this together and show you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using more than just this stamp, but I know this is going to be my focus stamp. And so the first thing that I actually did was we're going to be using craft paper today. And I actually printed that or stamped that four times on a piece of craft cardstock. This is not, you know, this is just your standard craft stock or craft cardstock. And so the next thing I'm going to do is it is going to be the focus of my card. So um, again, I have craft paper. This is cut at five and three quarter inches. And I am going to be putting that right pretty much, well, kind of like bottom center. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that stamped. <clears throat> and I stamped everything so far in Versafine Clear Nocturne. My intention is I am going to be making this a 3D um, image. So I wanted to use um, a background that I thought would be kind of fun for book pages and knowing full well that I can also color, um, I can color on top of this too, so that will be fun. But I will be adding more to this than just this, but this is my focal point and I wanted to get that part started. But I also have to keep in mind if I'm making this 3D, that if I'm gonna be adding anything to the outside of that, I'm gonna to have to be doing that before I add the 3D um, sections because I won't be able to close my lid for my stamping platform. So let's see how we how that stamped for me. Yep, I'm gonna have to press a little bit further. I got those other four to stamp very really good. Yep, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more, even though we're going to be building on top of this. This is not as significant, to be honest with you, um, because I'm going to be building on top of this. But I'm going to go ahead and give it another inking anyway, just in case there's something I have forgotten about as I'm building my layers. But I don't think so. I think this will mostly be covered up. This one will. That looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out some of what I'm going to do around the outside first before I start building up with my 3D. Okay, so I decided on a couple extra stamps from the collection that I'm going to be using, and one of those is the um, journal butterflies. These are butterflies that look like there are pages um, for their wings, which is really cool. And I'm using this sentiment called New Chapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp those, I think, all three of those at the same time. This is what that sentiment looks like. It says, wishing you, let's see if we can do that so we can see that a little bit better. Wishing you much joy and happiness as you begin a new chapter in your life. So this could also be a new home type of a, um, card as well. So that's really cool. Or just uh, just a new beginning of something. It could even be, you could even consider this a college door or a university door for when, um, you know, for graduation. So there's a lot of ideas you can use for this, I think. All right. And we still can add color even as we build this up, so it won't be a really big deal. And if I choose, and I haven't decided yet, I could also raise these up and make these um, butterflies 3D. We'll just see. Okay, that looks really good. I think I'm gonna put my light on a little bit so I can see a little bit better. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on uh, making the 3D of our um, enchanted library. Okay, so I found a few more things I, I decided I wanted to add to this scene. 
And that is, these are not from the new collection. This is what's been in Fairy Hugs for a little while now. Um, this one's called Mini Caterpillars. And I thought the caterpillars went really well with the butterfly theme. Um, idea and a new chapter in life and how things change. And then I'm also going to be using um, a Woodland Florals. And I'm going to be using this one right there. And I'm probably going to put it on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and stamp those two together at the same time. Again, I'm still using VersaFine Clear Nocturne. Just wanted you to see how I was going to build up this scene. looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the other side. And it's really okay if this one overlaps a little bit because it's going to be, that part's going to be on the first layer. So it's okay. My first layer of the 3D. Okay, so that's all set up and we're ready to start building our 3D scene. Okay, so I have prepared a lot um, to show you of um, what I've done. And um, first of all, this is the entire thing that we stamped. I've colored it in with Prismacolor pencils. The other thing I did, I'm gonna show you a little bit closer. Um, the other thing I did is you can see I've got a hole right there and what I did is I went ahead and I cut out that little door and I did color that in and there's a reason why I did that um, I'm going to show you that first I used from the new release it's called uh, reading dwellers and all of these little fairies are holding books and so I thought it was perfect since this is the enchanted library that we should have a little fairy inside. So what I did is I stamped her. Let's get that a little closer so you can see. I stamped her on a piece of paper exactly the same as a scrap. And then I'm going to be putting her inside of the library. So um, that's what the plan is just so that you can see that. Bring that back up a little bit. And I can do that last. And then I also, as I told you, I um, stamped this I think four times three times we'll check well a total of four times and um, I think I showed that to you too so this is one on here I did do an extra one and I did make a mistake so it was really good that I did stamp an extra one so this is the here let's see if we can get that in the frame better okay so what I did was I had this full piece right and so the first layer I cut to look like this and I'm going to have that sitting right there so that if you want to take a picture of that or a screenshot of that, you can see what you need. That is your, going to be your first layer. And that will be built up on top of this just like that. And you know what? As we're going, I'm going to just go right ahead and put that on. It's going to take me just a little bit of time to um, put some foam tape behind it, but then you can see what it is I'm doing. So you can see how to make your 3D. So basically, I just put um, foam tape on the back of that. If I was thinking about it, I would have done that ahead of time. I did not. So um, i trying to do this quickly. So you just put foam tape. This is how you um, build when you do it. They called it decoupage before. Um, I, and then it's also called 3D. Um, so you can do it and call it whatever you like, whatever that um, crafting description you like. Um, but it is, it's like doing that. 
So basically I would do something like that. I might even put a little bit, I think I'm gonna put it, just so that it has, doesn't cave in as much right there. We'll add a little bit more. I don't like to put big, huge strips of um, tape if I don't need it. And I don't. All right, so then we'll go ahead and take those all off. And this would be your first layer on top of your base layer. And keeping that in mind, I wanted you to see too how I colored. You do not have to color this entire thing underneath here, right? Um, because it's gonna get covered up. So um, you just kinda like keep that in mind too, if you're gonna color it. Um, if you're not gonna color it, it doesn't really matter what you, in that regard. So, and think how this could work also on white paper. It would be great on white paper as well. So basically then you just line that up and you put that down. Now there's a couple other things you can do along the way. And you see, like I said, it's covering that up. You can actually curl this up a little bit if you wanted to, give that a little bit even more little, um, I don't know, make it look like it's a little bit even more sitting up. And I kind of colored a little bit underneath so that I could if I wanted to. So that's your first layer. And that's all that is, is you're putting that on. And I did cut out the door for that too, because obviously I want to be able to see through the door. So then the next thing I did was, this is the next layer. And you can kind of see it's, it's pretty easy to understand where that would be. You would cut, you can cut wherever you want to, but that one looked like a good cut to me. So that is how I did that one. I'll leave that there if you want to screenshot that. Get that a little closer so you can see that would be your next layer and then how I colored it. The other thing is I didn't cut the door out, but I cut it so that it could be on a hinge. So this is the other part that I wanted you to see. This is the back side of the door. When I cut out any of these pieces, I saved one of the doors. Now, quite frankly, if someone were to look close, the door handle is not the same because this is not a reversed stamping. So it's, if somebody opens the door, they can see there is a back door. And that's just like, just my preference instead of it being plain. But you can put anything on the back of that if you want or leave it plain. So that's what I'm doing now is just putting a door on the back of the, the door right there. Now you wanna make sure that that lines up. If you have a little bit that overhangs, then you could trim it off. That's your door, so technically it could be open, but like I said, the door handle's on the other side. Only if somebody really looks. So that's your door, okay? And so again, we do the same thing. We cut a bunch of um, foam tape, and you make sure you don't do the door because you want the door to open. And like I said, this is the only one that you do not cut the door out. You just cut the opening up, except for the hinges, so that it can open. And it can be tricky sometimes when you're looking at it, you gotta make sure you cut the right part of it out. And I'll show you that on the other side again. I'm gonna cut two more. It goes a little bit thinner. Okay. So I want one at the bottom here, just for support. And I want one at this side. Some at this side, that works too. Okay, so then we take those all off the backing. We can raise that up a little bit. And like I said, this is just what makes it a 3D. And you can, like I said, curl the side of this one too if you want to. Um, I like to do it once I get it on, but you can do it either way. So then that just sets right on top where that is. Just like that. And because these were so tiny, I did color the greenery underneath each time, just because I knew that it could Come up a little bit so I'm just gonna curl that just a tiny 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 bit
Here we go. So that's the layer. We're not done yet. We've got one more layer because the steps would come out from that. And again, that's our door that opens. So we have, like I said, one more set here. A layer, not set, layer that we want to put in. It's our steps. And you can kind of look again. Oh, I should take get that so you can take a screenshot of that too if you like. Before I put it on. All right. So this is how I cut this one. We'll get that a little closer so you can see. All right, there you go. So get that back up just a little bit. Bring that over. There's a lot more you could really do to this if you want to make it more 3D. The um, like I said, the the butterfly or the yeah the butterflies could be cut out and layered up and give it 3D. That would be really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and put this piece on, line that up. And there we go. It's kind of like an interactive little card. So the other thing I wanted to do, uh, I am going to add this little girl to the back. So you can see that she's in the library. And to do that, I want to cut her a little bit because I don't need this much. All right. And that would be perfect. And then what we're gonna do is turn this over and you can see that little opening back here, right? So we're just gonna go ahead and put some glue because it's not gonna be 3D, this needs to be flush. Okay, I know I, I have, I mean, I know I have more paper. So I'm gonna open it back up so I can line it up with her. Okay, let's see if we can get that a little bit closer. I know that's going to kind of block the light. Maybe I can turn this little light on and give it a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Now that helps. Okay, so I want her feet close to the bottom, and I want as much of her wings in there as I can. So I think that looks pretty good. And we'll press that down so that sticks, and I'll turn it over. This is a scrap. <laughs> Okay, so she's inside and you can have the door closed or the door open. That works really good. So to what I want to do to finish this off is I did want to add a little bit more um, background dimension. And so I am using a size two um, cut out circle. And I'm going to put that right there to have it be. It could be a moon, a sun, whatever you want it to be. Um, I am going to be using Distress Oxide, this time I'm going to use Faded Jeans. It's a little bit lighter than what I normally use. Um, even though on my brush I have a little bit of... Um, I have a little bit of Chip Sapphire, so it'll probably blend in with it anyway. Alright, make sure I get this where I want it. I kind of want the um, caterpillar looking up at the butterfly, which it is, but I want it to even be a little bit more accented, I think, with this. I'm trying to be careful because I've got that book here too. So I'm going to come out with this and just kind of like I always kind of like um, softening it so it's not really, really harsh. I think that works like that. And then I also want to do the bottom. And uh, what I forgot is that, yeah, I do have this layer. I should have done that first. So FYI, if you do this again, you're gonna probably want to do this type of layering before you put your, make sure I get that flower, before you put your 3D on. 
it'll still work. I can get it to work. I'll just press down a little bit. And I'll come back in there. So that works on that side. And then I'm just going to come underneath here a little bit. But like I said, the best time to do this would be when you didn't put the 3D on already. All right, we're going to do this side. So we have that um, basically a base down there right now. And I think I am going to add a little bit more to that. All right, that's smoother. All right, so we've got everything put together now, um, and that makes our card complete, other than putting it on a card base. So. Um, let me lift that up just a little, or get that a little bit closer so you can see how that looks. And like I said, we've got our 3D going on. So I hope that um, I've inspired you and um, that's given you something um, to do that's a little bit different. I, um, I appreciate you stopping by and I will have all of the information below in the description.